So, so don't get emotionally attached with the ideas. Next tip number three, that is it's not just about the idea. So the investors don't just uh, invest an idea, they invest in people also. So you need to demonstrate that you have a solid execution plan in place to make this happen. Number three, four is practice pitching. Practice pitching is very much necessary between your colleagues because if we don't convince your colleagues, how will you convince the outside world? Tip number five, that is establish an innovation culture for the outset. So you have to take some ideas also from your employees also that here failure is okay, but success is rewarded. We all know failure is a success, P of success. Next comes tip number six, that is schedule time for the innovation. Make the time for innovation by setting aside regular hours every week and schedule a weekly brainstorming sessions. Tip number seven, that is technology helps. New technology can be expensive, but you should never underestimate the wonders it can do for the workplace efficiency and productivity. So these are the important seven tips for starting a startup for innovation to a startups. Next, I am coming to my innovative idea about my projects we, which I have, uh, I have um, done in our research times, our, our PhD times also. It's, it's on aquaculture. Aquaculture, because aquaculture industry is likely to experience a double hike because fish is the only source of cost-effective protein for human consumption. And aquaculture is one of the fastest growing forms of food production in the world and the fastest growing sector in the livestock industry. And this from economic point of view, the feed cost and the feed management accounts for at least 60% of the production cost. My target is the fish meal replacement in the fish feed. And my target species is that Macrobrachium rosenbargi, which is a freshwater prawn, and also Bengalis is called Golda chingri. It's a very palatable fish, I must say. Next comes the why this is Macrobrachium rosenbargi because Macrobrachium rosenbargi is very much less susceptible to disease, and it's a good test, and it's a very imp important um, culture species in in and around Indian Sundarban. And the global status of Macrobrachium rosenbergi is the West Bengal is the second largest producer in Indian maritime states after Andhra Pradesh. So I have chosen this species as a my culture species. Next comes why I haven't used this fish mill because most of the commercial feed they are using fish mill in a fish feed, but I haven't used this fish mill. Why? What's the reason behind it? The first thing is very much, it's very much expensive for fish farmers because uh, in and around Indian Sunday when the farmers are uh, very much poor, so they are not able to use this, able to use this expensive fish uh, feed. So I have uh, made a cheap fish meal with some local ingredients plant based in this uh, fish meal, fish feed. Next, this uh, protein, the animal protein, this generates ammonia. And ammonia basically reduces the feeding activity. And if the feeding activity reduces, the more production of residual feeds happens, which lowers the dissolved oxygen and increases the biological oxygen demand. All this ultimately results the stunted growth and mortality of the species. So in various corners of the world, replacement of the animal composition in the fish feed has also been initiated in full swing. And I, ha I have done the same thing. I have, I have replaced the animal protein with the plant protein, which is easily available in and around Indian Sundarban. So my um, basically the, this innovative program is there for attempts to use floral ingredients, which is available in and around Indian Sundarbans by replacing the animal ingredients. Animal ingredients, which are animal ingredients? That is trash, fish dust, stream dust, etc. in the prawn feed preparation to increase the growth potential of the 
species and maintain the environmental quality of the culture pond in order to make a sustainable practice. Okay, this is the zone where I have uh, researched my project, which I have done my project. This is the Indian Sundarban. This Sundarban is basically a biosphere reserve, you all know, and the house of Royal Bengal tigers, the 34 mangrove species, 16 species of seaweeds, and also it is designated as World Heritage Site by IUCN in 1987. The first step of my um, project was seasonal collection of selective seaweeds. For which seaweeds? Num number one is Entromorpha intestinalis, number two is Ulva lactuca, number three is Catnilla ripens. And the another thing is salt marsh grass, which is the local name is Dhani Ghash. That is a pioneer of the any island in the Sundarban, pioneer species that is called Potrasia quartata and their proximate analysis. Here is some uh, seaweeds. That is first one is Ulva lactuca. It is uh, basically the name, local name is Shobut Shaula. Under Ulvesi family, it contains eight to 15% of protein. And this is Catanilla ripens. This is also called the Lal Shaula. It's under the Rhodophysi family. It contains nine to 7% of protein. This is another seaweed that is Shuto Shaula, or uh, the scientific name is Entromorpha intestinalis, that is under Chlorophyce family. And this is rich in protein, highest protein than other species, that is 10 to 19%. And these all seaweeds contain astaxanthin. Astaxanthin is an antioxidant. It's a, it's, we can call this immunity booster. So it's a very good ingredient in the fish feed preparation. The four, fifth, fourth one is the halophytes, that is uh, Potrusia quartata. I have already mentioned that is called Anigash. It's a pioneer uh, species of mangrove ecological succession, and it con contains approximately 18% of protein and rich in iodine also. These are the full floral ingredients I have used in my fish feed preparation. These are the picture of my collection of floral uh, origin from uh, Sundarban region. Now comes the Composition and proximate uh, analysis of this feed. The first is commercial diet. Commercial diet has been purchased from the local market, which contains fish meal or shrimp meal 30%. And I have replaced this uh, fish 30% fish meal with the interim of intestinalis dust in the uh, diet one. In diet two, I have used this mixture of enteromorpha and also Potricia coctata. And diet three, I have used Potricia coconut dust. And the proximal analysis shows that all four diets have almost same fruit proteins. They're like commercial diets and as well as the um, experimental diets uh, contains approximately same percent of fruit protein also. Next, number three, number two steps. That is preparation of floral based fish food. This is the mixture of uh, Potricia coctata and the uh, interim mm, of intestinalis. These are some ingredients of fish feed ingredients. This is a mixture and grinding machine. This is a pelletizer. Uh, different types of pellet sizes are present. This is the drying machine and this is the packaging. So the say, step two is preparation of plural based fish feed, proximate analysis of feed and application of this formulated feed for culture in Macrobrachia Rosenbaum. Here, the, uh, here is the lab to land method. I have uh, prepared, I have um, just made a wonderful small scale feed machines in the uh, setups in, in and around Sundarban. These are some machines of grinding machine, that's pelletizer machine, etc. These are the feeds of different, um, uh, I mean, pellet sizes. These are the feeds and these are the packaging process. Next step is application of fish feed. So I have taken two types of uh, ponds. The one is experiment ponds. We, we hear uh, some uh, experimental feeds were given and another is control pond where the commercial feeds had been used. Next is the third step is monthly estimation of physicochemical and zootechnical parameters. Okay, these are some stations, three stations I have worked here as per the salinity different salinity regime. At each station, there is a two ponds. One is experiment pond and it's control ponds. 
these are some field study, a picture of field studies where some physiochemical and zootechnical parameters were uh, estimated. Now comes the result and discussion part. Here are some physicochemical parameters. These are the physical uh, results of physicochemical parameters of surface water temperature, dissolved oxygen, pH, salinity, nitrate, phosphate, silicate, alkalinity, hardness, BOD, COD, ammonia, chlorophyll A, soil pH, soil organic carbons, all results showing the good results in the experimental pond than the control pond, which is reflected in this ANOVA results. Uh, results. Here, this AA means significantly similar. Here, significantly similar in the case of water temperature because both ponds, experimental and control ponds are in the same geographical area and also soil pH because some lines uh, uh, have been used that in the pond. So these two, in two cases, these we have, I have, uh, in, this, uh, in these two cases, the results are similar. But here, from dissolved oxygen to nitrogen load, BOD, COD, alkalinity, hardness, chlorophyll A, organic carbon, the results are significantly dissimilar because, because the use of two different types of feeds. The good results has been found in experimental ponds, but the control ponds, the results are not so much satisfactory like experimental ponds because in the control ponds we have used commercial diet and commercial diet contains fish, uh, fish uh, origin, animal protein. This animal protein definitely increases the ammonia which ultimately results the low FCR and stunted growth. This uh, now that's important, that is two technical parameters. And here the graphical representation of length and weight of diet one and also condition index or, and the length weight and I think because of some technical glitch, we have lost uh, contact with uh, Dr. Ghosh. I think she will join us in a while. So let's bear with the problem. I think she has lost the connectivity. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, can you please check with her if she can join again? Okay, I'm like, checking with yeah. her. Yes, oh, yes. Thank you. I request all the panelists to share the links and give contacts because our students have not yet joined from our MSc.
Uh, okay, so we um, we have uh, established connection with uh, Dr. Ghosh. Yeah, so, yeah. Very much, very much sorry. Very much sorry. That's understood, ma'am. Yeah. Electricity problem and after the electricity that the Wi-Fi goes off. Okay, ma'am. No problem. Just hold can on. Continue, just ma'am. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, please just hold on. Am I audible? Uh, yes, uh, ma'am, you're audible. Yes, Dr. Please. You can share your screen, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Your screen yeah, is can you there. tell me which was my last screen? Uh, I think uh, it was slide number 27, 28, I think, or 27. Okay, I, okay. okay. I, I will start from 26. Yeah, yeah, sure, ma'am. No problem. Yeah, is it uh, visible? Yes, ma'am, it is visible. You can continue. Okay, okay. And the result of two technical parameters. Uh, these are the graphs showing the growth performance of macrobiotic and rosenbergic feed number, that number one, that is a uh, length weight relationship and the condition index uh, graph. This is a graph of uh, diet number two, and this is a graphical representation of diet number three. Here, the table of the summary where shows the good biomass in case of uh, experimental pond, that is 80 grams to 92 grams, good survival rate, that is 71% to 76%. Specific growth rate was much higher, that is 3.61 uh, to 3.72 in case of experimental pond than the control pond. The FCR, what is the FCR? FCR is a feed conversion ratio, that is the maximum amount of feed has been converted in the biomass. Low FCR means good uh, result. That is here, the experimental pond, the three experiment pond, we, I have got the, um, the lower FCR than the control pond. PER, that is protein ratio, that is most of the proteins that has been used that uh, results in the good PER ratio in case of experimental pond. The condition uh, index was uh, good. The production was much higher than the uh, control pond in experimental pond, which reflects in cost benefit ratio. Cost benefit ratio is it's much higher than in the experimental pond and this good cost benefit ratio and total income obtained may be attributed to increased front production and low FCR, which are primary success indicators in the aquaculture. So therefore inclusions of the CVs and also Patricia Coctera best feed in the diet resulted in the high economic return and profitability through the prawn sale. Here, the present study indicates that the plant protein source can be an alternative or supplementary for the growth of prawns. It will minimize the toxicity of water and production cost and also maximize the production per unit area and growth of prawns. It may be the growth promoter, disease resistant and environment healer also. So this result reflects the economic upliftment of the island dwellers in Gangetic Delta throughout the sustainable prawn culture, the opening of the alternative livelihood, and through the development of small scale endemic plant based fish feed industries. That is the main target of this project. Next, there are some publications uh, regarding this uh, project. Here, some, uh, some Example of biological startups. Biological startups, that is uh, five top biological startups among them that Kinva. Kinva is a uh, Singapore-based company. 
which is working in the which is a kin, kin feed the startups of aquaculture feed pro, pro, provides a high quality protein resulting from a stable production process the solution is eco friendly and uses far less water and land to produce constant amount of feed next this is the aquaculture startups from the five aquaculture startups the biokind biokind is a uk based startup that produces aquaculture feed the startup uses natural fermentation on agricultural waste to produce traceable and sustainable proteins the startup as a result enables fish farmers to provide highly nutritious and eco friendly fish these are some of the startups in the india that is irov abrotech nature dots bharat rhino biotech e feeds is bharat rhino biotech and e feeds also uh, that um, you that made some fish feeds they, they are working on fish feeds also okay these are some alternative uh, fish meal startups some fish meals or uh, they are using some some companies are using microalgae macroalgae sol methane that is uh, nib bio cyanofeed calista etc some algae based feed are also used uh, these are startups of the uh, company that is alma key nature solar zymes uh, zypho bioscience cargill these are all startups of uh, who are who are mane who are uh, who are basically working on the fish feed replacement fish meal replacement they are the working on fish meal replacement this is a very good news this is a, a press release where the department of fisheries government of india in association with startup india ministry of commerce and industries anadarshan the fisheries startup grand challenge on 13th january 2002 this year the challenge has been launched with an objective to provide a platform to startups within the country to showcase their innovative solutions within the fisheries and aquaculture sectors and this fisheries startup challenge launched uh, by department of fisheries so they have applied they have uh, they are the submission of the application on the startup they have uh, made a indian portal that is www.startupindia.gov.in this is the portal this is a portal you can easily just uh, type www.startupindia.gov.in the main target is atmanirbhar bharat here the key to equates of this uh, talks that is constantly research and reevaluate in order to better understand the marketplace remember to leave an emotional distance and uh, an employee critical eye frame any idea in the wider context of your business goals so that they are selling a realistic plan and not just an idea always set aside the time that can be dedicated to innovation and make the workplace a safe space to do so consider introducing new technologies onto your business to make process more efficient and productive environmental sustainability food safety traceability and operational productivity are some of the key areas these are the key areas to in, in need of innovation as per the raj uh, sonasundaram that is he, he is a founder of aqua connect chennai he says that aquaculture is all about culturing your water and we need to build sustainable in the entire ecosystem lastly i acknowledge dr abhijit uh, mehra who is my supervisor and now the research director of uh, techno india university and also dr sufia zaman head of the department of in department of oceanography techno university and all the members of techno university for giving me the opportunity for uh, to deliver this lecture and lastly thank you to all uh thank you very much dr ghosh it was uh, it was really a very insightful and engaging talk and i think our students and all of us thank have you. gained some knowledge and you know have some new ideas if anybody is interested to open some startups so uh, so i would request the house if anybody is interested to ask any questions they can um, shoot the question directly to dr ghosh and i'm sure she will be very happy to answer so sure. they can use the q and a box or even they can use a chat box to for posting questions the panelists are also encouraged to ask questions if they have any 
uh, yes, the panelists and the participants, please uh, share your questions to Dr. Ghosh or you all can share. Uh, Dr. Ghosh, you can share your email ID uh, yeah. if possible to the chat box so chat that box. the participants, uh, if uh, they want to connect, get connected with you, they can. Sure, sure, sure. I am just typing my email. And uh, in the meantime, maybe uh, I would request all the panelists to kindly uh, turn on their video so that we can take a quick uh, screenshot for our record. Yes, yes. I mean, yeah, and by, I mean, the audience can use the time to uh, think of questions and post them. I have shared my uh, email ID. Anyone just, you need to connect me just email me no problem i'm here to serve you anyone amongst the panelists uh, dr pavel bishwas dr pallavi datta you all can share your questions because your major portion of your phd was uh, is in the fishery sector so anyone can just uh, ask any questions to her Yes, ma'am. My yes, ma'am. My question is to Rajupa, ma'am. Yes, yes, Father, tell me. Uh, that what is the initial cost for startup this kind of fish feed, fish feed the alternative food business? So, yeah, if you just uh, you need to buy some uh, machines. That is, I have already mentioned grinding machine, mixture machine, pelletizer. Approximately ten to twenty thousand. This machine cost set up, and there is another cost of seed cost, feed cost. Feed cost is like uh, in case of uh, commercial feed, the cost was 35 to 40 rupees uh, per kg. But I have used this experimental feed. Experimental feed cost is 19 to 20 um, rupees per kg, ex except, my, I mean, minus the seaweed cost and uh, potrisha cost because these are the lo locally available species. Okay. So another thing is labor cost. These are all uh, cost approximately, um, that is the 30,000 approximate cost. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Depending upon the pond size also. Okay, okay. Because feed cost, seed cost, it's all depend upon the pond size. Okay, okay, okay. Are you uh, talking about the uh, uh, starting of the PC culture or or, yeah. or agriculture? I just tell I just telling about the what is the cost about the feed only fish feed preparation because because most of the people okay like, fish feed preparation the prepar fish feed preparation basically you have to buy some machineries and also the ingredients. Okay. That's not much. Okay, okay, thank you. Anyone from the student group can ask any, share your question in the chat box for my MSc first year, second year. Please share your questions in the chat box. Um, Mr. Bani Broto, Mr. Bapon, you all can ask questions in the chat box, please. Ma'am, I have a question. I'm just thinking like since yes, you sure, sure. about Dr. Uh, Prita, seaweed, proceed. yeah, seaweeds no. uh, as uh, a supplement, like feed supplement. So can we also use uh, other mangroves? Like, I mean, seaweeds are not mangroves, but we have a lot of mangrove uh, associates. Like, uh, yeah, mangrove associates. So we have a lot of uh, you know vast repertoire of uh, resources <laughs> in, fact, in the mangroves. So can we use any mangroves like the, maybe the leaf eaters as a feed? feed? Like, has that been looked looked into earlier? Yeah, the works are have been going that um, the leaves of mangroves are also contain some proteins, but it needs lots of research on that. If okay. we get some good protein from the mangrove species, then definitely we, will, we can use it in the fish feed. Okay. So comparatively, like seaweeds contain more uh, plant protein compared to mangrove leaves and stuff. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, ma'am. Seaweeds are much uh, protein uh, rich, rich content. Okay. Question has come in the chat box. Chat box. From Mr. Shubhodip Shamanto. Can this kind of fish feed be utilized in case of ornamental fishes also? Yes, it can be used in ornamental fishes also. No problem. Easily can be used. It will minimize the cost of feed, feed also. If you use the local ingredients, that the feed cost also decreases. No, it's a good. Anyone? 
any any other questions from the house um if not then i would um, thank um, dr ghosh for giving us her valuable thank time you, thank you thank you thank you pita mukherji it was really wonderful um so um now now i would request uh, dr um, uh, mr pavel biswas uh, who is a research senior research scholar in our department of oceanography to kindly give the vote of thanks thank you dr mukherji and uh, now this is the time of vote of thanks and i would like to thank all the part participants those who have participated in this session and i think they are they are they are enjoyed the wonderful session and i would like to thank dr abhijit mitra research dean techno india university dr rina palodi ma'am director techno india university dr sufia jaman head of the direct, director department of oceanography and our speaker dr raj rajrupa ghosh dr prasanjit tamani faculty member of department of oceanography dr pitam mukherji dr shorob bhatta dr navneet pal dr arpita shah and please sana ahmed thank you and over to you dr pitam mukherji thank you pavel uh, for this nice word of thanks so with this i would um, uh, once again request all the panel members to kindly uh, you know turn on their video so that we can quickly take a screenshot Thank you so much. So with this, I would um, thank everyone for your presence, cooperation, and patient hearing. So good night and stay safe. Thank you. I'm looking forward to hear more from Dr. Ghosh in the future webinars of IIT. Sure, sure, Sophia. Sure, Sophia. Okay, okay. Thank you. So I'm much. always thank here you. for you all. Anytime you call me, I am here. Thank sure, you. Sure. Nice thank you, Pritam. Thank okay, you, Sophia. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you, all students uh, who have joined and the participants. Thank you, madam. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.